history. So please help me welcome Mr. Jeff Olson. Go get him, buddy. Go. <clears throat> Hey, baby. Good stuff. I, I love this song. Wow, what a crowd. OK. Let's do it. Welcome to Vegas. Now, this is being streamed out around the world. You know, th these days, you can send an a, a, a electronic feed out and go to the entire world. So for you people out there, hello. Hi there. And um, here's one thing I do know, uh, what happens in Vegas is not going to stay in Vegas here, OK? Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I welcome our Spanish friends we're translating to. I welcome our Korean friends we're translating to. And I welcome our ASL fans we're, uh, we're translating to. And so um, you know, and I've, uh, I've always said in my life that when, whatever you do, every choice you, you know, during the day, you're basically built up with the choices you make. And uh, the choices you make define you. And, and you, when you make a choice, you're either building your dream or you're building somebody else's dream. It's, it's, it's kind of a simple way to figure things out. And those people here, you're building your dream. Those people out there at the casinos, they're not building their dream, OK? They're building somebody else's dream. These buildings aren't here in Vegas because of, of you. They're building their dream for them, OK? So I applaud you for being in here, OK? I'm sure we have a few out there. They didn't make it over here. I was, <laughs> I, was good. I got in my elevator last night to go to my room about 11 o'clock, and there's these uh, really nice young ladies in there, and I was talking to them, and they're all excited, and they're new, and I said, well, I'm really impressed you go, that you're going to bed so early. They go, oh, no, we're putting our stuff up. We're going out. And I said, oh, boy. <laughs> I hope you're here, okay? So um, it's really exciting because it, this event here in, in, uh, in Vegas, this is one of our bashes. It's our third bash in three months, okay? But just the last two weeks, two companies are good friends of mine. The owners of the company are really good friends of mine, had their quote unquote international conference here. They're each nine and 10 years old. They're each operating in anywhere from eight countries to 21 countries. So they're significant companies. Each one of them is in the top 100 companies in the direct sales news. And so they're, they're really good friends of mine. So one company was here two, year, two weeks ago. The other company was here one week ago. International conference, nine year old companies operating in 10 to 20 countries and we're bigger crowd than they had, OK? So um, that's kind of a clue. That's a clue. <laughs> There's something going on here. And so uh, and this is just one of our bashes. The big one's coming in July, our big event, OK? And that's going to be our big event, where we'll put a group together that's unprecedented. There'll never been that large of a crowd together, a company that's less than two years old in Dallas. So I can tell you, uh, there, it seems like we're always saying the best is yet to come. But when you get to Dallas, it's the best is yet to come, OK? I can tell you the things we're working on. And so um, you know what I've always said, when you, when you come to an event like this, it, it does things for you. It does the same thing that should happen at your regionals back home. It should happen at your market parties. It should happen at your, your home parties. And that is, when we meet people and we share with them what Nirim is all about, what should happen to them is the desire to be successful should change in them. I believe regardless of who you are, how you showed up today, how strong your desire is, when you leave this weekend, you'll leave here with a stronger desire than you showed up. That's the first thing that has to happen. Without desire, nothing else even matters. If you don't have the desire, you might as well just take it home, OK? So desire starts the whole process. Second thing is just as important, though, and that is faith. You got to believe what you're doing can get you what you want. So if you have a desire to achieve something, you got to believe what you're doing can achieve it for you. There can't be an incongruency between the two. They have to work together. So if you desire something, which is what happens here at Nirium, you have to have the faith that what Nirim provides here can give you what you desire. So what we want to have happen is you get a stronger desire as you leave, but you leave here with a bigger faith. The third thing was a big one, and it's going to be a big part of this weekend, is you'll leave here knowing you can do the business. See, that's the biggest question people ask, can I do this? And what happens all too often, people are always are searching for something, you know, what's the magic sauce? And what they'll see here, and what you'll see over and over, is this huge success that people had in this company, but you'll realize that everything they're doing, you can do. And that's our main thing we're gonna talk about this week is how we're mastering the mundane, we're being tightening it up. I really believe for a company less than two years old, I've never seen a company figure out who they are. We call it the rhythm. 
We need to know who we are, okay? And so we've tightened it up. You'll leave here knowing that you can do this business. Now, you might have to learn how to do it better. You might have to learn how to do it consistently. You might have to do it for a longer period of time. But you can leave here knowing that you can do it. The fourth thing, it just happens because of who we are. And I'll talk about this later on. You can't help but leave here a better person. There's just something about the synergy of people come together. There's, you know, two minds create a third, a more powerful mind. And when you attract quality people like we're tracking in this company, you just can't help but it changes you. And we're a company that's really built on people changing their lives, making their life better, but more importantly, touching other people's lives. And so when you leave here, you'll just leave a different place, a different person that showed up. But the big one is when you leave here, I believe you'll leave with bigger dreams, bigger goals, bigger, you know, thinking what you can become with Nerium. And, you know, for me, getting ready to talk today, you know, and knowing everything I know, okay, and I'm in a lot of other meetings that are going on in this company right now. And uh, when I was putting everything together, the thing that struck me so hard is that really our breakout year is in 2014. Now, that's kind of crazy to say, okay, because we, we changed how this, the industry's looked at in 2012, and we're doing that in 2013. We've broken records, but I really believe that our breakout year is going to be 2014, and our massive expansion explosion is going to be 14, 15, and 16. And at this event called 2020, I mean, you have visions 2020, but you're also the year 2020, where we're going to be, and that's what we're going to talk a lot about today in my presentation. But I really do believe, you know, the, the, what's going to happen here in the next year is going to be a big breakout in this company. So, you know, how does this happen? I have a lot of people, you know, talk to me about what's going on there, how's this happening, and, and when I talk to them, I always say there's, there's three things that we try and get our leaders to understand because it's the same thing that we try to do in the company. And I, I don't believe you can be successful unless these three things are in place. Number one, you just absolutely got to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, okay, I mean, you really, and that, that sounds simple, but do you really know who you are? As a company, you got to know who you are. Thir second thing, you got to know where you're going. The third thing, you got to know how you're going to get there. Know who you are, know where you're going, know how you're going to get there. And when we started this company, we literally sat for a couple of years in a cave. Literally, nobody knew what was going on. And we started thinking and building out this company and building our, our core values. And our biggest core value is go slow to go fast, which means if you're going to do it, do it right the first time. But we came up with three words to launch the company on. Three words are serving us very well and can serve us very well going forward, and that is make people better. Those are the three words we thought about when we built this company. And so behind the scene, we started building things out. And we kind of had a thinking. I, I always thought if you just build it right, they will come. I think so often people start to figure out, how do I go get people? I, I see it totally different. If you build it right, you do it right, they will just come. Versus how do I go find this person? How do I find that person? How do I go launch the company? See, what we did in this company is we didn't do a pre-launch. We didn't do a grand opening. We built the company, we built it solid, we built it first class, and we rolled it out the door and let, let it just organically find itself. Organic growth is the most honest growth you can have. Now, too often, and I hate to say that, in this industry, what happens is things are launched on perception. And they try to turn perception into reality, and reality never catches up to perception. That damages a lot of people. We didn't do that here at Nerium. We built it on the truth. We built it organically, we let it roll out, we took it out of the cave, we rolled it out, and look what happened. A year later, we're the fastest company to ever go to $100 million in knows in this industry. A year later, we're the fastest company to ever get into the, the DSN Top 100. A year later, we get the Bravo Award for Excellence at the DSN Conference just three weeks ago. Now think about that, because it's really interesting to have those things happen, because when you look at the companies around us, I'm leaving from here, um, on Monday to go to our biotechnology company and to go to the board of directors meeting. And I'm going to that board of directors meeting to kind of, you know, do what we do at board of directors meetings, which is boring stuff. But I'm going there to, 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 uh, to be with those scientists, okay? <laughs> which you guys just got to be in that world one of these days and just watch these conversations. So very interesting, okay? My brain and their brain, you know, just trying to find each other. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is I'm going there. And one thing I'm going to really share with them is, is because for them, you know, they're up from the outside, too. And these people live in a whole other space. They really do. God, I love that they're over there, okay? But with that said, it's for them to really see, I'm, I'm, I've been putting together an analysis of all the other companies that are kind of in the top. You know, when you're in the top 100 DSN, 
you are in the top one percentile of the industry. There's been thousands of companies that come and go, and thousands of companies in this industry. To be in the top 100, you've got to be very good. If you look at the companies around us in ranking, okay, we're the first that have gotten in the first year, but you got to look at the companies around us in ranking, there's some things you notice. First of all, they've been around about 15 years, not one year, okay? Second thing you notice, they're in 10 to 20 countries, not one country. Third thing you notice is they have built a product line, not just one product. So you've got to start thinking about that. We're sitting here with one product in one country, one year old, and we're as big as all these companies have been 15 years old, a product line in 15 countries. It's called a clue, okay? <laughs> There's something going on. And so, you know, but with all that said, I, I got to tell you, I had, I had a moment a few weeks ago that really touched me when I, because it was a moment I realized this company's going to be great. And that sounds corny with all the things going on. But we, our second bash was in Nashville. And for anybody that knows me, uh, I, have a t I, I will stay and hang, hang out in the audience forever. I love you guys, okay? I'm, I, I'm a field rat, okay? This corporate stuff's boring. This is something you got to do, okay? And, um, but I love being in the field. And I love talking to new people. My favorite people are brand new people. Those are my favorite people to talk to. And when I talk to them here, I always say, you're a baby brand partner, aren't you? That's who I, I, you all, I've said that to a ton of you. When you introduce yourself, you're a baby brand partner. You gotta understand, everybody starts out as a baby brand partner. And for me as a CEO, I gotta get what a baby brand partner is going through. I gotta get who they are. Because they are, you know, we, we have a tendency to speak to ourselves sometimes, and that's not how you build a company. You, you, you build a company on brand new people who have a job, have a family, have hobbies that are important to them, okay? They have a life. We want to do is be able to give them something when they come in, they're out of their comfort zone, they're, you know, they're, they're, their level of knowledge is way down here, their anxiety is way up here. I want to understand this so we can give them something that helps them to be successful. And so when talking to these people, I probably had 300 to 350, maybe 400 conversations, anywhere from 30 seconds to five minutes, okay, through that weekend. And the Sunday afterwards, it just hit me when I was in my room that 90% of those conversations that I had we're not about our product, which is an amazing product. Not about our opportunity, which is an amazing opportunity, but they were talking to me about how they feel. And when people start talking to you about how they feel, that's called culture. And when you build culture, you become a great company. See, to get into this industry, to get into this industry, you gotta get in with a product. You gotta have a story because you're trying to squeeze into this industry. You gotta have a story. You have to have a comp plan. I hate to say it, a lot of companies come to this industry really with just kind of a me too product and, just, and they really come screaming large about their comp plan. I think if the company's talking about their comp plan first, run, okay? A comp plan is just something that rewards proper behavior. That's all it does. And so what we did is we got people thinking about how they feel, that's called culture. I would say out of every 100 companies that come and go in this industry, or launch in this industry, maybe one or two of them ever get to culture. And they're always about the money, 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 product, 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 which is important, okay? But when you have culture, you have strength. You have, you have a foundation you build a great company on. So for me, that's got me so excited. And so when I was at the event uh, just a few weeks ago uh, where we got the award and all the neat just accolades that were said about us, uh, I got to meet with a couple people that were important to me. One person I've been, I really wanted to spend some serious time with, he's, um, he's just a good person. He's a great man, uh, graduated at the top of his business school, one of the best business schools in the United States, been, sat on the board of the DSA for a long time, uh, is a chairman of a great direct sales company. And uh, we got together after everybody was gone, and we went and sat down for a long time, okay, and talked. And... Um, he was basically saying, how did this happen? You know, you're the, you were the talk of this whole event that just went on. How did it happen? And I said, if I had to summarize, sum it up in one word, that word would be value. We did everything that's value. Okay, and he says, well, what do you mean by that? Because and and as we started having the conversation, it was really interesting to watch this smart person light up about what this company's all about. Because he didn't even get it from the outside, and this is a very smart person. 
First of all, I talk about organic, what that means. And he, because he understands all these things that happen on perception that doesn't turn into reality, okay? And I said, this was truly organic, and I went through how we did that, how we just rolled it out and let it be what it is and what that meant. Then I talked about we were customer-driven. That's very important. If you really know this industry, you better be customer-driven. That the, the number one foundation of this company is that we build a customer base. I was interviewed by Direct Sales News the other day, and they said to me, what do you think is the most critical thing? I go, because I, and I it said, make this company successful, and I said, we are customer driven. If you figure out the customer model, everything else works. If you don't feel it, figure out the customer model, everything else is difficult. We are very customer driven. The next thing I said is we are brand partner friendly. And he goes, what do you mean by that, brand partner friendly? I go, we do everything we can, number one, to make the customer proposition is as much high value as possible, low, low problem. But in a brand partner, we do the same thing. I go, let me share a number with you. Less than 3%. He goes, what do you mean by that? I go, less than 3% of all the inventories bought from us, he goes, our brand partners, is bought by them because they need inventory. Less than 3%, they made a choice to buy inventory from us. You understand this industry, in every other company, it's anywhere from 40 to 70%, if not more, their inventory that is sold is sold because people are trying to satisfy a comp plan trying to satisfy a comp plan. And at that point, we sat there for a long time and talked. He goes, I don't get how you can build a company like that. He goes, because quite honestly, out there amongst your peers that have seen your success, they think that you're loading people with inventory. I go, pretty soon you're about to find out how crazy it is, because we are, but it's free, okay? <laughs> you know, and, it, <laughs> and it's a game changer. Those numbers have never been spoken, ever, ever, ever remotely close. That only 3% of the products ever bought from us are bought. Somebody just says, hey, I need more product, and they go out to get that product, okay? That's unheard of. Most product in this industry is moved by people trying to accomplish something in a comp plan. So it's a big, big, big difference. You know, the other thing I explained to them, we don't play comp plan games here. There's, we're not slotting people in. We're not moving things around. This is a comp plan, it's a solid comp plan, and it's the last thing we talk about. We talk about our product, we talk about our, our business, we talk about our values, and if we do those things right, the comp plan takes care of it. It took us a long time to get through that, and I'll come back to that later on when I talk about Niren Gives Back. But I said, here's what, where it starts, and if you, you really, if you're building a real class company, and that's what we're trying to do here. Our whole goal from day one was to build the best company in the direct sales industry. If you're gonna build a real class company, the first thing you wanna do is do what? You want to start in a real class space. Makes sense, right? There's no better space, we know that, in the space of beauty. It's just obvious. You go in a department store, the first thing you see is beauty. It's never going to change. You're not going to see diets there. You're not going to see coffee there. You're not going to see services there. You're not going to see travel there. And, and nothing wrong with those spaces. They're not, that's not, they're not bad spaces. I'm just saying the first thing you see forever, your whole life, will be beauty. That's called a clue, okay? <laughs> it's just a clue. And when nine of the top 10 companies in the direct sales industry occupy the space of beauty, that's called a clue. So if you were just had a blank piece of paper and you design a real class company, you would start in a real class space. It's that simple. So we did that. The second thing, you'd want to have a real class product. And this is where, again, he didn't understand who we are. Because I said, let me explain what's going on here. And I told the story about near and biotechnology. I took back to all the meetings we had and all the things I know. A lot of things I talk to them about, you don't even know about. The things that I, conversations I've been in and all the peer review presentations and the medical people behind these companies and the advisory board and the people behind it and all the things. And uh, he was this guy, wow, this is like legitimate, real scientist that's going on here. I go, yes, real scientist, okay? And, um, and then I talked about the clinicals and I explained these clinicals. How they weren't subjective. They're true, honest clinicals. We had nothing to do with them. We handed this off. They, they, they had to put it together over there, and they did it. Under a protocol, hands off. We had no way of influencing it. This is a real, a real third-party clinical test that was done. Not subjective, objective, real data. And what came back in. And he didn't, didn't really understand that. And I went through the, what a clinical is. And when he got through that, he goes, my God, so you, the results you're talking about are truly documented at a science level. I go, yes, they are. I said, well, it was more bigger than that, though. It started creating results. And then I started telling them about the pictures. 
I said, follow this. I wish I could say his name. Follow this, what we did. I go, about 45 days into the company, the pictures rolling back in us were just overwhelming of people's before and after pictures. Just honest pictures, people taking out their smartphone, taking a picture of themselves, and a few weeks later doing it again and sending them in to us. And I went through them. And I said, now you notice the lighting's different, everything's different, because these are honest pictures. These aren't set up by a professional photographer. These are real people giving us real pictures of real results. And so I said, look at these. He goes, they're amazing, okay? I said, but follow what we did. At a point in time, we realized that these pictures were really gonna be the strongest marketing tool we had. So what we did is we decided to put in the kit that everybody get. When they get that kit, there's gonna be a flyer that says, stop, don't move, don't you dare put this product on your face unless you take a picture of your face. Now, I said, do you understand what that meant? I go, we bet the company on the product. I challenge people, do you, would you do something like that to bet the company on the product? You walk in a department store, do you think any department store would ever do that? The nine of the top 10 direct sales companies in the industry in this space, do you think they would do that? Okay, we literally bet the company on the product, okay? And guess what? We exploded because of it, because the product works. We literally documented that the product works. When I went through that, he goes, oh my God. He goes, I told him, you don't know what it was like when we sat in that room and made the decision whether to do that or not. It's scary, okay? Because you were kind of just releasing to the world, be the truth, okay? And bring it back to me. And if the product is what it is, then it'll be what it is. And it took off and exploded for us. And so we had the pictures I talked about. We're the first in the market. See, think about it, in most direct sales companies, how many direct sales companies really bring something first to the market? I mean, what you guys represent is something that's never been done. First to the market has huge differentiation. It's not just first to the direct sales industry, it's first to the market, okay? So you're in this huge space that dominates retail, this huge space that dominates direct sales, and you're coming with something that's first to the market that has huge differentiation, that has massive clinicals behind it. And then the neat thing about it, we brought something to the market that has a huge barrier of entry from anybody else replicating it. And we talked about that because you know all the time these companies come along, they launch something, and the great thing is they were successful, the bad thing is was they were successful. Because all of a sudden, success breeds what? Competition. Other competitors show up. All of a sudden, there's not just you. There's a second version, third version, fourth version, fifth version. Eventually, it erodes your base, and then the company deteriorates. We don't have that here. And so the other thing I want to talk about our 30-day money-back guarantee, that we stand behind it. And we literally, if somebody gives us a bottle back on the 29th day empty, which means they used it, we'll give them their money back. We don't want to have people who are not happy with our product. So what we did was we put a real class product inside of a real class space. Those are the perfect scenarios to start creating a great company. But the big thing that we did around that is we put together a real class company. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I always say, people said, God, it seems like you're, you got a first class company with, with smart people that have integrity. I go, how do you get those kind of people? And I go, well, you hire real class people that are smart with integrity, okay? It's that simple. And uh, we just have that. I mean. Our team back in Dallas, I love them. They, they're just, they're smart people, but I always say you let them babysit your kids. They have integrity. They're good people. They're driven people. They get what we're all about. They're in unison with you guys, and they're trying to build a real class company for you. And so we put a real class company around a real class product in a real class space. And then comes the opportunity. We put together a real class opportunity. People never in the history of this industry is a company come out and less than two years have as many people making $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, $300,000 a year, $400,000 a year, $500,000 a year, $600,000 a year, $700,000, $800,000, all the way to $1.5 million a year, okay? We have them all the way. Nobody's ever seen that. It's crazy. We, last month, we broke an NMD, a national marketing director, every three days. By the time we get to Dallas, it'll be every two days. By the time we get this fall, it'll be every day. You know how many iPads and cars that is for every national marketing director? Think about that. And the cool thing about it is they're building on a solid residual base because the space we occupy, the real class space, is the stickiest space. Beauty is a sticky space. When you come with a real class product, you have a sticky product in a sticky space, okay? 
and we come in with that, you can build what's called residuals. I was in a company before, they talked about residuals, one out of 100 maybe ever saw that. Here, you're in residual second month. Our NMDs pretty much, when they get up on the first day of the month, 80% of their business is already done for that month. You get that? If not more. I mean, it is done because we just got this machine that drafts and ships product because people want that one little product. So it's built on a solid residual. The cool thing about that is like, for example, we have a car program. Thousands plus, thousands of people have earned or qualified for the Lexus car. Other companies out there, they have a huge problem. I mean, somebody gets the car, three months later, the tow truck shows up, okay? Because the model was not built on solid ground. We don't have that problem here ever. When somebody gets to our car, it just keeps on evolving, and they're qualified for that car forever. It's not like they get in the car and they go, oh, my God, I keep, I'm not going to be able to keep this car. That shows you we have a solid foundation, a solid opportunity. The trips we've done, the trip we did in Cancun was real class, first class. The trip we're going to do in Cabo here in, in, in the August of this year is going to be first class. I hope a bunch of you are planning to be national market directors by the end of May to go to that. But, but let me talk to most of you here. Most of you aren't going to be going to Cabo with us, okay? Because you're new and your business hasn't evolved that much. And, and that's cool. What you should be excited about is, boy, these guys took a, a group of people to Cancun first class, and then they grew it way bigger and took a huge resort in uh, Cabo and are taking them there first class, and we'll just get bigger. I know what we're trying to put together for the summer of 2014, and it's cuckoo, okay? It's, and it's big, it's big, okay? And um, so just know you can be for that one. You can go on our cuckoo trip in 2014, okay? And um, so, you know, from a compensation, there's a lot of great things. But, you know, I was at that event, that, uh, the symposium of the 500-plus top executives of the direct sales industry. And I, I was, I, that event's been going on 12-plus years. And actually, I was introduced um, was as the only person that's ever spoken at the event every single year. So it's just kind of a neat thing, because as long as I get to keep speaking every year, nobody can ever catch me, okay? And so, um, but the thing is, is uh, and I was the last speaker at that event, and um, was was kind of intimidating. Number one, when you walk out in that crowd, you don't get a lot of applause. It's, you know, these are other CEOs go, yeah, right, okay. You don't know, you don't get the love like we're getting here. And so, um, it, it's it's so interesting. It's so interesting to talk to these, this group, okay. And um, and then the, it, even worse, on everybody's table, they have electronic voter, okay, and they vote you a one to a ten, okay. These are like TED Talks. They're 18 minutes, go for it, okay? And um, so, you know, there's a lot of egos in that room, okay? And so it's just easy to go one, 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 you know, type of thing. And so when I spoke to that group, obviously everybody's interested in what's going on in Nerium, okay? And uh, went up there, but I really talked about a simple thing. I talked about the rhythm of the company, how important that is. And I really went into it and I shared is, is quick as I could, as hard as I could, what that meant and what we're trying to do, trying to give them some value, okay? Not, not get up there and brag about our, what we're doing here at Nerium, none of that stuff, but try and give them some value. I got voted a 9.87, cuckoo, okay? Now, that's crazy, that, that's crazy, because you know there's competitors over there hitting ones on me, okay? So, I mean, you know that, okay? And I was stunned that really, they did that. I thought that's pretty nice of them, okay? And so um, <clears throat> I say that not to brag, I say that to they got what I was talking about. I said, you, I just said people, and I said the whole time on, you got to get who your customer is. They're brand new people. And I went through the whole story about the grass farm, <clears throat> talk about the, how they feel and where they're coming from, what they're doing. And you got to give them something they can do. And I went through our eight point system. And I went through that. We, we want people to have something that they feel like they can do and eventually they can teach and eventually they can manage. And I went through all that and I said, you have to have a great rhythm and you got to build it on third party tools that you got to build it on a third party messenger. Basically, you got to give them the message and the messenger. And I went through that and I said, as a message, you got to have three messages that you got to build third party. Number one, you got to give them everything they need to go out and deliver a good message to the people they're talking to about your company. Not them do it. They got to be the messenger, not the message. Okay? And so we got to give them a great message on the opportunity. And I went through how we're doing that. Got to give them a great message on the training. 
and how we're doing that. They shouldn't be having to drive the training. They should be able to drive a training system. I went through how we're doing that. And then you got to have a great message on the communication. And if you can master those three things, then you got a good start. And I went through that, the whole process that we're doing. I go, but now let me give you the secret. Messenger. you got to build messengers who can deliver the message. And if you'll invest into your people more than you invest in any other part of your company, and you build people who are the messenger that deliver the message of the opportunity, who deliver the message of the training, who deliver the message of the communication, then you have a system that you can start building a great company. And so there, it was most, so interesting to see this group going, wow, that's neat stuff. <laughs> you know, I was going, really? Okay, so I'm, I'm, but, but you need to understand what we've done here is unprecedented. It really is. The, the, the simplicity, and we're about ready to take it to a whole other level this weekend. We really are. We're tightening up our message on the opportunity. We're tightening up our message on the training. We're tightening up our message on the communication. And the things we're working on, where we're going to look like a year from now, is off the charts in those three areas. And, and we're doing some really neat things in that area. But Because here's what I see all too often in this industry, is companies get in this industry, and, and I'm, not, I'm watching them do it right now all over the place, is they get in the United States, they never really get a foothold. They never even have a meeting this big, ever, ever, ever. And all of a sudden, they're in this country, and they're in that country, and that country, and that country. Now, if you're, got, if you're a mess in the United States, where you know the culture and the language, how big of a mess are you when you get to another country when you don't know the culture and the language? Okay? So where are your values? Where's the integrity of taking a model that you haven't figured out in your own culture and your own language and go put it in another culture and language when you haven't done what you need to do over here and you don't know who you are you don't know where you're going you don't know how you're going to get there and you duplicate it in another country it's one of the biggest challenges in this industry it's caused a lot of problems out there now what we're going to do is we're building a real class company here and we're going to go and we're going to build a real class company there and one of our things we said go slow to go fast i will guarantee you all these companies out there they're just running a bunch of these countries will be way bigger than them by the year 2020 because we're going to stamp them out right. You're going to be able to go to, a, whether it's Spanish or whether it's a, whatever language it's going to be, you're going to be able to be in that country and you're going to hear, see that person over there talking and you're not going to understand a word they're saying, but you're going to know that they're talking about the opportunity this way. You're going to know they're talking about the training this way. You're going to know they're talking about the communication this way because it will be exactly the same. That's what happens. That's what you want to duplicate. One thing we've done here... One thing we've done here, and for you new people, you won't understand this, but trust me, in most companies of this size, by the time they get this size, there's 10 different ways of doing the business. Because what happens, when, and I talked about this to that group, I go, when, if you, I, one of the things I said to the, to the uh, leaders there, because I got a lot of questions from them about, you know, I, well, I, you know, I, had, I had some CEOs, because we did a question and answer, ask, well, I got people in my group will do this way, and I got people in my group do that way, and I got people in my group that way. And I go, let me explain something to you that I learned a long time ago. Never argue with a person that buys ink by the barrel or got the microphone in their hand, okay? Because they'll win every time. I go, you as the CEO of your company, you got the ink, you got the mic. And if you don't have a rhythm in your company, it's because you don't know you're taking them. Because you're the one who's got the back office, you're the one who has the training, you're the one who has the emails, you're the one who has the conference call, you're the one who has the message, you have that, okay? And if you do that, you should be able to put together a system that the people will be willing to buy into. And if there's 10 versions of what your company do, does things, it's because you left a void, and the field will always fill that void. Now, every other company out there has that going on. I'm not saying that to brag on us, but we truly are unique here. Never have you seen a company this size where there's ways of one rhythm. We're literally 95% plus this company is one rhythm, one voice, one way of this is how we do it here. You know how big that is for you? Could be in California, you know it's gonna be the same way in Boston. And for the people in Boston, my prayers go out to you, okay? I didn't think this came out of my mouth, I've heard so much. And so, um, but, thank you. <laughs> of course Boston came popping out because y'all, you see it every day. And I feel terrible about what happened there, but. Um, but, but the thing is to have one rhythm, okay? And, and we've done that here. But see, would you, if you can build one rhythm and hold it together in one country like this, then you can just take that rhythm and you can just go put it in another culture, in another language, and the same thing will happen. 
That might seem small to you. It's probably one of the most important things we did for your future between now and your 2020. So you can sit here and have a system that you can lean on in another culture, in another language, and go to work for you, okay? We gotta stamp it out here. Most companies never do that. So this weekend, you're gonna see a lot of how we tighten it up. You're gonna see our real results regionals, have we tighten up that training. You're gonna see our, our real results parties, have we tighten up that process. Matter of fact, our real results party program that we're bringing out this weekend, I just think is the best thing we've ever done, okay? And I'm just so excited about it because it's just gonna give you something that's very duplicatable, very easy to do for a brand new person who's out of their comfort zone, who's never done anything like this before, who has a job, who has a family, has hobbies, can literally get a home party started like that and do it right the first time, okay? So I'm excited about that. But, but you know, at that symposium, the theme of that symposium was disruptive. What are, you, what are people doing disruptive? I was sitting a lot of time going, disruptive good or bad? <laughs> you know, because I see a lot of bad disruptive sometimes, okay? But you know, disruptive means game changers. Let me tell you what we did in this industry is disruptive. It's called Nerium Gives Back. It's a game changer. This is the hardest thing for people to put their heads around when they look at this company. How can you do that? I mean, wh why is it we only have 3% of people that buy inventory from us? Because we give the inventory for free. When I sat with that smart person and explained this and went through the whole process, he asked very intelligent questions. He got into questions about what you might call actuary. If you're in the insurance industry, you understand actuary tables which means you understand the value of a customer and you understand the investment you would make and the return on the investment you get if you have a value of a customer. The only way you can do that is if you have a product that will stick to a, for a certain length and you gotta be willing to bet on it. When we made a decision to do the near gives back, which is anytime you bring us a customer, we give another a bottle. Anytime you brand part another bottle, we just stock your inventory for free. Something that's never been done in this industry. You, you make a one-time investment and we invest in you for the rest of your life. That's a disruptive model, okay? That has changed the whole ambiance of this company. And in every other direct sales company, what you have to do is you make money, then you take most of it, and you go buy more inventory from them. So they're going, great, I gave them money and they bought back from me again, okay? Here, we give you the money, and then we ship you the product for free. I mean, three are free, and then Nerium gives back. And <clears throat> we just ship those bottles out. It changes the psychic. Understand, most people cannot sell. One out of 20 people can maybe sell. Some people can share. But way more people can share than can sell. But if somebody buys something and they turn around and try and sell it to somebody, knowing they have an investment and they need that money back, it changes who they are. It changes the cadence of their voice. It changes the energy that they are. It, they're, it, they're just this law of attraction that goes on. But if you give somebody something, and they go out and they get in front of somebody, it just changes who they are, okay? Changes the whole ambiance on them. So what we've done, we built a, a group here, brand partners, who are in the loving, caring, sharing, giving mode. It's a game changer. Nearum gives back. It's, it's been so interesting that nobody's done it yet. Or maybe I should say it's not so interesting nobody's done it yet, okay? Because it is a game changer. It is really, that is something that took this company that I think would, most companies would have failed underneath it and we thrived on it. And quite honestly, is, it is probably the most disruptive thing we've done in the industry. And it's the most, I think the most valued thing we've done in this industry is to change the way that we're perceived from that standpoint, inventory. <laughs> on top of the, uh, the, 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 the opportunity, the, the thing for me that's the most exciting thing is that we've built a first class or real class field, you guys, okay? Because at the end of the day, we basically they're going to make it or break it with you guys. Okay, it's that simple. I mean, everything we do at the end of the day ends up with you and a brand new person. Okay? And what we have done, like no other company I've ever seen in this industry, is we've put together a real class field. And I mean that. And I'm just saying that. People come to our events who are veterans in this industry for 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, always say the same thing to me. Your group is different than any group I've ever seen. I'm talking about people who've been in front of thousands of groups. There's something magical going on here because I really do believe like attracts like. I really do believe there is a law of attraction. I do believe that good people gravitate towards good people. I do believe that bad people gravitate towards bad people. It just happens, okay? 
we've done something special here. I mean, when we launched this company, excuse me, when we launched this company and we, we put that word real out there, you know, that was a big decision. I mean, to say that we're going to be real science, real result, real opportunity, real people, real life. And it started this magical thing called real. Real people started to show up. And about three months in the company, all of a sudden you start seeing talking about the Nerium experience. Now, we'd moved our way into the industry. We came with our product and our opportunity. But all of a sudden we start talking about we are going to do this company a little differently. We're going to talk about the whole person. We know we're going to be a great skincare company. We know we're going to be a great opportunity, but we want to be about the whole person. We want to live better, okay? So we talk about the near experience. When everybody showed up in Cancun last year, our top people, they showed up, they showed up to a branding called loving, caring, and sharing. And that wasn't window dressing. You talk things into existence. You live things into existence. It start, everything in your life that is successful starts with you, and then it radiates from you out. When you live internally, then everything works externally. When you live externally, nothing works internally, in my opinion. It starts with you, and it works out. So we put on there, we're going, we're going to build a great company. We're going to do it real. We're going to be about the whole person, make people better, the whole person. But we're going to do it in a loving, caring, and sharing way. And we started living that. Guess what we started doing? Tracting, loving, caring, and sharing people. And it's amazing how that is happening. That the, the quality of people are being attracted to our company. And then, last fall, we brought in the happiness movement. We've, and tonight, for you new people who have never been to one of these events, you're going to have a treat of your life tonight. And we do a three-hour workshop on being happy. Now, it, now, now, think about this. Think about this. There's, in, in this weekend, nothing gets three hours. I don't get three hours. Dennis doesn't get three hours. Mark doesn't get three hours. The product doesn't get three hours. The opportunity doesn't get three hours. Nothing gets three hours but one thing, happiness. That's, that's a big statement. Matter of fact, tonight you'll hear how Sean Aker's working with a prestigious university to put together a research case study on Nerium to show how happiness affects your business and how you can all be a part of that. That'll be a first, never done, okay? Pretty cool. But the reason we're doing that is because, number one, it, it's about you being a better person. What you find out when you start really figuring it out is that happiness is first, results are second. Everything's results are first and happiness follows. And that's why you go through the whole life searching. But all of a sudden you realize it's not I get healthy and then I become happy. I get money, I become happy. I get a special relationship, I become happy. No, I get happy and I get successful. I get happy, I get healthy. I get happy, my business works. I get happy and things work. Happy is the first step to it. And so what we've done is we're making a huge investment in getting into the happiness part of the business. And so tonight's a part of that and it's just the beginning of where we're going with it. I believe it really is the secret weapon. I've always believed personal development was the secret weapon. I'm going to talk about tonight why I think happiness is the next evolution of personal development. So a huge investment on our part in turning what? People into good messengers. So you need great, great messengers. You create happy messengers. All of a sudden they deliver the message of the opportunity or a happy messenger delivers the message of the, of the training or the happy messenger delivers the message of the communication. It has a tendency to work better. So we invested heavily in happiness. But with that also, when you look at our company, the thing I love is when you get our kit, which is, it's amazing to me still that somebody hasn't come out with a kit, try to build a kit better than ours. Because that kit really is the best kit to ever come out from a standpoint of branding and quality and, and everything that's in it. And when people see that, it immediately says to them, these guys are real. These guys are solid, okay? But when you look at it, I think what they see is these guys know what they're doing when they go through it. And so it's a first-class kit. But the thing about it, when you go through that kit, what I'm most proud of is half that kit is not about the company, not about the product, not about the opportunity, not about money. It's about you, the person, you, the messenger. And we can create great messengers, then we can create, make the message work in the opportunity, in the training, in the communications. And so we have a huge commitment to that. You go to our Real Life Library, huge commitment to give you free information to help me become a better messenger. You're going to hear from David Bird here later on. When I, when, I, when I explain David Bird to this gentleman, 
that was another one of his aha type things. I said, do you, do you know, I, I, um, and I, I talked to him about the company he used to be the, the, the uh, president of. And um, he, David Bird has a 30 year history of being one of the top business coaches in this country, okay? He's, uh, he, he's, I mean, on a global basis, he's worked with the who's who's. And so here's a man who spent 30 years of his life learning how to coach people, how to be better successful people, CEOs all the way, all different types of businesses. Now he works full time with us. And all David Bird does is sit in his home in Waco and sometimes comes to our events, okay? And he sits there and he talks to our national marketing directors. They all have a scheduled time with him, okay? Every single month, a scheduled time to talk to him about high payoff activities so that we're all doing the same high payoff activities to help this person who has 30 years of collective knowledge from thousands of the smartest people on this earth. And he, get, and he brings that to one focal point on our high payoff activities and he talks to our leaders. So we come to National Marketing Director, we give you David Bird. He's not free. He costs us, okay? We give you David Bird to talk to you to help you focus that. At the same time, the same time he does the same thing for our top our top executives and management in the company. So think about it. Over here is the field leadership, and over here is the company executives, and he's talking to them all so he gets the language. They're all learning the same thing so we can focus on being the perfect the great company and delivering a system around the high payoff activities. That has never been done ever in the direct sales industry. And it's a big, big thing for us. And so again, it's a huge commitment on our part to be a company about creating what? Great messengers. So we're trying to, we can't have a lot of great messengers, but that's why we have a lot of great leaders who are great messengers. And so David Bird's a big part of the intellectual side of that. But on top of that, you know, we, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, you'll hear about that later on tonight. I mean, we've made a huge commitment to that. A lot of times when people start being, you know, giving, it's because they got a lot. We started giving in our first year. We started giving right away. We started giving to Big Brothers, Big Sisters. We're, we're now one of the most active organizations with them. I think they're the, the best organization we could be involved in for what we do. We got involved with Success for Teens. We had the Success for Teens workshops. Again, a big thing, giving back to the youth of this country. Uh, of this country. I mean, our company really hasn't been about giving. But the biggest giving thing we do is every time you guys go out there and have success, 30% of your success goes back to biotechnology research. And all you got to do, just go check out who they are. You'll see the research they're doing, okay? It's good stuff for humanity. Think about it. I mean, you, you're talking about tithing. We're tithing 30% back to research on how to fix some of the ills that people are going through. I, I was just with um, our makeup artist uh, backstage, and she was talking about, number one, she started using our product, and she's never not worn makeup. Of course, you're a makeup artist. She always wears makeup. She goes, I finally, for the first time, leave my house without makeup. She also shared me a story. She just lost her husband to cancer. And I sat and talked to her about the whole thing. And, and you know, it, that's a deep thing. And uh, to know that 30% of your success goes back to biotechnology that's working on things like that, that's pretty cool, I think. It makes me feel good that we tied back to something like that. One thing I've been talking to our, our, um, our field leadership a lot about lady, lately is that we've built, we've built this great footprint and we've built this great rhythm. And we've, I've never seen a group of leaders come together and, and work together so succinctly as we've done here. And we have a new tagline in the company, and that is we want to build leaders who complete each other, don't compete with each other. Complete, not compete, okay? I understand the competitive side. I like the competitive side, okay? but we're gonna build people who complete each other, not compete with each other. And here's the feeling I have with everything I've kind of said here today. And it's kind of a message out to the world, okay? Because you know, we're in an amazing industry, the direct sales industry, and this model is brilliant. My, my, my degree's in business, okay? I've, I've been in the Fortune 100 role in business. I love business, I think it through all the time. When I saw direct sales, intellectually, it made sense. It made sense to be able to get, have boots on the ground. It made sense to be able to get with people and make things happen. It made sense if a product needs to be felt, touched, experienced, explored, handled, demonstrated. It worked in this model, okay? But it's been hard for me to watch how this beautiful model is taken advantage of by companies who play games with comp plans, who do these different things, okay? Who build companies on perception, not on reality who launch companies and hope they make money from the field so they can invest in their company. We sat in a hole and no, no commerce at all 
for two years building this company, okay? There wasn't, I got a product, let's roll it out, and we'll make some money so we can build the company. None of that games here, okay? My message is this, and I really mean this, because I know one of the problems you've got. You go out there and people go, oh, that industry. Here's what I know. If every company in this industry acted like we do, this industry would be loved by everybody. It would be loved by everybody. They'd be begging to get into it. I'm serious about that. You should be proud of that. Because somebody's got to be the beacon. Somebody's got to be the beacon. Somebody's got to show that you can do it without jamming people full of inventory. You can do it without playing games. You can do it by being real. You can do it by being a loving, caring, sharing company. You can do it by building customers. You can do it by being brand partner friendly. And we've done that. And we did that, and we became the fastest company in the direct sales industry, top 100 in the DSN News. It's called a clue. Okay? It's called a clue. I really mean that. If you do it right, they will come. You build it, and they will come. And so we've done that here. And so, you know, to, you know we, this whole theme is around 2020. We're going to be about 2020. Here's what I can tell you. We just got started. We really had. What we're working on is, is off the charts. But there's great things going on. This weekend, we're launching our fund development program. A neat thing that we're bringing out. This weekend, we're bringing out, not this weekend, in, in, the, in July, we're bringing out what we call YEP, Young Entrepreneur Program, which I'm excited about. I love the, the, the name YEP because it's edgy, you know, for the young people. Do you want to be financial free? Yep. You want a car? Yep. Okay. And so that's what we're doing. Okay. You're going you're gonna to hear tomorrow about um, something we're doing that's never been done before either, that we are the underwriter for a PBS show that's going to be coming up, okay? And you're going to hear about that. That's going to be big. PBS is the most respected broadcast educational system out there. We are going to be the underwriter of something. You'll be hearing about it starting in August. And guess what? We're filming it in, in Southern California in May, and some of you get to be in the audience because you know how they, they shoot over and we're all, ah. you know, so you'll get to be those people, okay? But uh, it's going to be a cool thing, never been done. But, you know, the, the thing I'm really excited about, we just had a meeting the other day for, for, I don't know, five hours with some consultants that we're working with to really build the future platform of this company. It's going to be an amazing platform for the opportunity, for the training, the communication. Very, very, very lead breakthrough people who, who just understand the, the intuitive, virtual, interactive, modular training modules, communication process. And these people are smart, okay, and they've done some big things. And they're backstage, and they love you. I mean, and they've been walking around talking to you without you knowing it. Just say, what is this thing? And you've been saying, oh, and they go, these people really love this thing, okay? But, but they're, they're here. I, when I sat with the owner of the company the other day and shared everything we're doing, he literally got tears in his eyes about who we are. He did because he says, this is what I love. This is what I want. He goes, I've always, he goes, let me show you my mission. My mission is to use technology to make the world a better place, okay? Make people better. And so we got some neat things behind us working, but, you know, it all comes down to what do you do with it. You know, with this event here, we're tightening it up. We're tightening up our message on the, on the opportunity. We're tightening up our message on training. We're tightening up our message on communication. We're going to leave here. We got a, a tour of the national market directors. Thank you all up front here. Being part of that, they're going to go out there for you so you can build your business on your back door, build it regional, build it nationally. And we're going to race into Dallas for our second conference, okay? There'll be over 10,000 people. It's gonna be historical, and there's so many great things that we're gonna be bringing out there. And then from there, we're gonna go on a run for, we're gonna, in, in the fall, we're gonna have our East Coast Conference in Baltimore in October, and our West Coast Conference in November in Long Beach, and that's gonna be a big one. I think, um, I think we'll have 10,000 plus people in Long Beach, quite honestly. We, we, we maxed out at 13,000 there, so get ready, okay? But here, here's one thing I can tell you. Is a few years ago, we sat in a cave and we took our time to build the company, to build a world class company, launch it world class, no hype, roll it out the door, look 10 years old, day one. We sat in a cave, we did that. And our whole goal was to make people better, build a model and start making people better. Here's what I can tell you in Dallas, there's a cave right now. There's another cave. There really is, okay? And there's a team. And there's something being worked on. That's big, okay? And we're attracting something that, laws of attraction are beautiful things when it works for you, okay? And I can just tell you, I'm as excited about this cave as about that cave, okay? And so, and that cave is gonna make people better. 
But I end with this, because people always ask me, okay, what's, what do you, what's the future of your company with the field? And I go, very simple. I want to take the people we got and go get the people we got. What I mean is I love you guys. I don't want anything different. You guys are the best of the best. I just need more of you, okay? God bless you all. It's a great start. Just have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.